Good morning, and thanks again for everyone attending. Um, the reason I'm up here is we were asked to look at a bridge, the Lynn Road Bridge, which was a cable stay and post tension bridge over the M25, rail bridge over probably one of the busy mo busiest motorways, certainly in England. And we we're all sorted with respect to post tension investigations, concrete testing. Yep, fine, tick all the boxes. We're very experienced in that. What do you know about cable stays? Very short response from me, not a great deal. Um, I spoke to a contact of mine at formerly Strain Store, but it's now James Fisher, who had done some monitoring work for us before on uh, metal structures. And his response was, we can actually do some accelerometer testing to determine the load on the cable stay. I thought, well, that's good. But as the theme of today is about hidden defects, now most of these cable stays are wrapped in plastic. So how do we know what's going on? We don't. So therefore, I had a chat with, this, um, with James Fisher and said, are there any other techniques that we can determine what's going on with cable stays before the structure falls down? Mirandi Bridge being a very good example of something which you don't want to happen again. 43 deaths. So James Fisher did a bit of a search, and we came up with a company in um, France who could do some work and effectively use pretty much the same techniques that I'm going to talk to you about today. However, they were going to be using roped access to access the cable stays and do the work, which really wouldn't have applied. So the reason we got into bed effectively with IPC is um, we were going to propose to use this other company. I didn't think it was going to really work. And fortunately, something plopped up on my LinkedIn posts from a firm called IPC, based out in Tampa, in Florida. Um, spoke to the chap over there, robotics, now that sounds good. No TM, or very limited TM, and we're not working at height. And when you consider most of the deaths on construction sites are due to working at height, if we can reduce that, everybody's going to be a lot happier. So Drummond said, well, we don't know who they are. Probably best for you go over there, which I really did struggle to go over into Tampa in January. Um, but went over, had a chat with them, we put some proposals together to our client, and the job went ahead. So what we're looking at here is just a generic way that we're looking forward about how you can do cable stay inspections. So we'd be generally looking at the inspection scope, why it's important to do these inspections, and the methods of work. Now, the photograph you see here is of the Boyne Bridge in Ireland. Again, another structure I was asked to go and have a look at. Um, the two techniques that we're proposing um, to be used in the UK is a full visual survey of the uh, cable stays and then a magnet magnetic flux leakage investigation. Mag flux is an is a NDT technique that's been around for a number of years, but its application to cable stays and doing it in a robotic form in the UK is very, very new. Um, I don't really need to say a lot about cable stay bridges. We've, I've mentioned already the Morandi Bridge. Um, other bridges have been falling down around the world because of a lack of a proper program of inspection and investigation. Here you can see a graph of what's been going on over the last 30 or 40 years. So. This presentation was predominantly written because of the um, Boyne Bridge. Um, here we had a problem that Frasenay were the constru con construction company who actually installed the cable stays on the Boyne Bridge. Their 15-year maintenance program said that their program of checking to see if everything was OK was to withdraw one rope from one cable out of the whole bridge. There was 60, 70 cables with about 70 ropes in each cable. So I'm not going to do the calculation of what percentage we're looking at, but to just remove one rope and say that's, that's giving you an idea of what's going on with the corrosive condition of the cable stays 
to me is pretty poor. Plus, would you like to close the M8 for three weeks because you've got to do this? That's what they were going to have to do with a major north-south road from Dublin to Belfast. So we came in and said, we think there's a, probably a better way of doing it and to do this technique whereby we're not looking at one rope out of 70 out of 70 again. We can actually look at all of the cable stays with the robotic process that we're looking at. This would obviously reduce massively the amount of traffic management required on the bridge, reduce working at height, and would mean we would actually get 100% survey of the structure. Um, again, here we go. The, this is a graph of what, we, what has not been done, particularly with cable stay bridges. Now, with respect to the Mirandi Bridge in Genoa, again, cable stay bridge, critical element construction, and the corrosion of these cable stays, one went and it was just like a pack of cards. Um, actually, finding out more about the construction of the bridge, we found that um, at the time they thought it was quite an innovative design of the cable stays, rather than having bunches of rope wrapped in a, in a plastic sheath, these were actually post-tensioned. And just to divert a little bit, but what was to mention some of the information Steve and Ryan were talking about, they had actually done some intrusive works on some of the cable stays on the Mirandi Bridge. And exactly what we've been describing had found voids, corrosion, and the cable stays, or the ducts forming the cable stays were in a really poor condition. What Mirandi, the designer of the bridge, had decided, because of the Genoa Bridge being very near the sea, he decided to give extra protection to these cables by encasing them in concrete. Hence, we don't see any of the corrosion occurring. Merrily occurs within the sheath. We don't see anything until it fell down. So again, the techniques that we've been talking about could have been applied to this bridge. Um, and what was very strange, there was a TV documentary about this that I presume a few of you may have seen. What actually happened is, because of the condition of some of the cable stays that they determined, they decided, very similar to the Hammersmith Bridge, which we've spoken about, to externally post-tension the cable stays. Having done that, you would have thought then the next programme of works would be to test the other cable stays. They decided, at that point, there was a change in ownership of the bridge. The company who took it over from, effectively, the government had a company that did NDT, and they said, please, can you come up with some sort of system that we can look at these cable stays and maybe give them a clean bill of health? They came up with a, with a test which wasn't really applicable. These cable stays, as you can see on the bridge here, were massively long, and the technique from what we've discovered could probably go anywhere between two or three feet to five feet maximum. Chocolate teapot time, to be perfectly honest. So we can see what's happened here. Again, a complete lack of proper investigation of, of the... Uh, cable stays, which leads us on to IPC, the company in Florida. We had a chat with them about how we could um, propose to use the techniques that they've actually been using in the States. So effectively, what we were able to do, and as you can see here, we can place this on the photographs you can see here. It's purely a visual examination of the cables. Um, so they can clamp this process on where you have four high definition cameras that with the robotic nature of the system will just run up and then down the cable stay. Conventional ways of looking at cable stays would be to have hoists or ropes access. You have a hoist, you've got to close virtually the whole road because of the health and safety issues of the hoist potentially falling over in high winds. Plus, one of the things that IPC certainly gave us a good lot of uh, feedback on is People in hoists don't normally operate them very well, and most of the damage that they've actually seen on some of the cable stays was damage due to uses of hoists banging in to the cables. But as you can see here, we can get really good detailed photographs. So this seemed to be like a really good approach to apply to the Lynn Bridge on the M25. And as you can see, this was damage caused by previous inspections using MUPES, taking off the protective coating and actually having proper distress damaging the actual profile of the cable stay. So, 
But that's only inspecting the outside of the cable. And it's a bit like when we're doing the post-tension works. We can open up on a post-tension duct. The sheath looks all really nice and good, but we don't know what's going on inside. So the MDT method is magnetic flux. And what it does, it gives us a reading of what they call loss of metallic area. For some reason, I was told I can't call it corrosion. I'm going to be led by the, the experts because this isn't my field, as you can probably well imagine. So what the technique requires is magnetizing the ferrous objects with effectively a very large magnet. Um, and this is exactly what IPC have designed. And so it's a very big magnet that's clamped around the cable, has a motor on it, and just why it goes up and down. How does magnetic flux work? Like I say, I'm not a physicist, but it sets up this magnetic um, field around the, the cable stay. And if the cable stay is in good condition and there's no breaks and such like, we get a nice clean reading coming back. However, if there's any defects or breaks, these are picked up by the, mag by the magnetic field. So this is giving an idea of how it works. So on the left-hand side, you can see a sketch of um, a typical cable stay. Um, the machine is placed on the lower section near the anchorage. And on the right-hand side, you can see this is the double system that we actually used on the limb bridge. So the upper section is the um, high-definition cameras. And on the lower section is the magnet, magnet. So what it would actually do is it would run up the cable doing the photography, and then come back doing the magnetic flux. Very quick, very safe system. The questions that we were asked when we were putting this forward to Network Rail and Osborne's, who were running the job down in London, was, well, what happens? Is it going to fall off? What happens if it breaks down, the batteries don't work? And, and all these other things. They were, because if you can well imagine, we were working on a Network Rail structure trains could potentially be running, and we're working above the M25. This system has a fail safe, so if it does run out of juice, it just runs slowly down on a braking system to the lower section of the cable stay where we can pick it up. And we actually had to get them to put in additional strops to make sure it couldn't fall off. There was no way this thing was going to fall off anyway. So as it says here, problem positions can be detected and at that point, what we'd like to do is to try and then, as we've done with any other, other PTSIs, go in and actually have a look. So that would be removing the sheath and actually having a visible look at what condition the actual cables are like. It's very, very sensitive as well. So these are the results that you'll actually get in a report. So you can see on the upper section, that's the scan. With, with what I would say that would be completely defect free. On the lower scan, you can see that we've got some large spikes in the record here, which would be an indication of corroded or broken wires. And again, further information to show large indication, more corrosion. So this is probably, it's not the best photograph because it came off a PDF, but this is the one that um, I think really shows what we're looking at. So in the upper left-hand photograph, you can actually see there is corrosion of the wires, and in some instances, they're broken. And from the middle shot, which is the actual results that come out of the machine, you can see where you've got the spike, and from that, IPC can give you an idea of percentages of loss. In the lower photograph, you can see you've really got a major problem. Um, if it was a critical structure, that's not going to hold up anything. And as you can see, the spike in the middle uh, slide gave them an indication of a 30% loss. So as I said, they're reported on graphs um, giving you a loss of metallic area. Now, we've just spoken about cable stays, but the equipment and the um, technology can be used for other elements. So what we've got here is the cable, s cable scan is exactly what we've been talking about, but what they've been doing in the States, and this is something that we've had some interest from some of the um, 
Highway England areas in England is that we have to, on a regular basis, do a lot of surveys on um, a number of lighting columns, CCTV columns that are positioned next to the hard shoulder on the motorways. Now, for us to do a PI, as everybody knows, you've got to get within touching distance. And again, that would mean lane closures being done at night. As we all know, what's the best time to do an inspection of a structure to pick up defects? It's certainly not being done at 2 o'clock in the morning when it's lashing down. So if we can do this during the day without traffic management, there's massive cost savings and we're getting a better inspection. So the pole scans is a very similar system that can run up and down lighting columns, CCTV masks and the like. There's another system that IPC also offer, which is this wire rope inspection. So this is something that if um, we were looking at something like the uh, Hammersmith Bridge, um, where they're looking at, because it's being closed because of corrosion problems, um, causing absolute chaos in the west of London, we could potentially have to use this sort of um, technology to determine what's going on with the wire ropes. This sort of structure, I think some of the photographs or some of the works that they've been doing over in the States, they were um, working on the Brooklyn Bridge, looking at the cable stays. And again, IPC, by all means, go onto the website. They've got lots of good, good videos during the day. Now, this brings me on to another application that we can use the magnetic flux leakage. We have a number of externally post-tension structures in the UK, and currently the only way we really look at them is by two methods. One of them is to actually undertake x-rays, and secondly, to go in and do the intrusive surveys that we've talked about previously. Um, probably the easiest way is to give you an example of the frustration that we at HDA have had in the very recent past. We were asked to look at a um, very large bridge, I think it was about half a kilometre long down in Cornwall, which was a voided deck, and within the voided deck there was seven kilometres of externally post-tensioned tendons. The spec that had been specced by a company called Mistras, who do x-rays, which is fine, x-rays can be a very good application in certain circumstances, but if you've got seven kilometres of tendons and you're going to be looking at less than six linear metres of tendons using x-ray, it's a pretty limited technique and expensive. We propose to use the tendon scan, which is effectively the same technology that we've been talking about on cable stays, but they clamp it around the external tendon, and here you can just physically run it along with your hand. We probably, for the same cost, if not less, could have surveyed the entire seven kilometres of the external post-tension to the bridge. That, to me, as an engineer, would be far better than doing six and a half metres. But I think it's the technology that we're trying to get picked up by, the, by Highways England to take this on board. As we've said, in, with all the techniques, we still need to do some sort of intrusive investigation. But having been able to, to survey an entire seven kilometre section of bridge, we can then go in and highlight the areas where we might want to do some x-rays. Probably more often than not, we'd actually like to open up the tendon and physically examine to see what the condition is. So we go on to our experience of what, what happened. So we had a chat with IPC. Um, they came over to the UK, and as far as I understand, and please shoot me down if I'm wrong here, it's the first time that the robotic inspection of a cable say structure has ever been completed successfully in the UK. We were able to, because of the problems that we had on the contract, we, HJ, were falsely um, told that we would have a 24-hour possession on this bridge. So that meant the juice was off for 24 hours on the railway line, and we had a stand, well, and we had a 20, no, a 12-hour closure on the M25. The entire M25 was closed that evening. However, when we actually worked out with the closures and this, that, and the other, the rail and road only had an overlap of about two and a half hours, which isn't time to do anything. Uh, we had to go back and propose how we could then utilise this technique to really get as much information out of the investigation based upon limited closures. And because of the construction details on the bridge, it meant that we, they were happy for us to access 
the outside cable stays from very limited traffic management on the M25. And we are able, in this instance, in three or four nights, to actually survey 50% of all the cable stays on the bridge. Um, the client was happy with that because there was a 100% um, redundancy on the bridge. So if we knew 50% of them were fine, the other 50 could go and it would still stand up. We got great results back. Um, unfortunately, because all of this work was done at night, we haven't been able to get the greatest of photographs. But on the, on the left-hand side, you can see the unit progressing up one of the cable stays. Um, this bridge is quite infamous in, in England because it was voted one of the most ugly concrete bridges ever built a number of years ago, and it isn't very nice to look at. Um, but you can see just in the background there a very tall central tower um, where the cable stays came through uh, Anchorage details. On the right, you can see a nice close-up. Again, the blue painted sheath that you can see at the bottom, that's the magnet that is magnetizing the cable stay, and you've got the camera assembly further up. I think we do have... This is the video of it working, so as you can see, great quick technique. And it means no men at home, no major closures. And physically, there's no way, if we could have just accessed it from the track, we wouldn't have been able to do any work with, with hoist because as most people know the only track trolleys you'll get or, or track mutes are only going to be about four or five metres. Okay, thank you very much. I have to apologise. IPC would have been here. They were here luckily in London um, because of the job that we did at the Lynn Bridge was just pre prior to our uh, event and we actually did have the equipment. But they're, they're incredibly busy at the moment. Um, and we've had a lot of interest in, in this sort of technology which we would like to push forward. I just think being able to reduce the costs of traffic management, um, working at height, it, it, it is definitely the way forward. And if, they, if we can maybe get, get some sort of setup with IPC, I think the costs of doing this work would be dramatically reduced as well. And I have to reiterate, it's the whole structure we're looking at, not a small percentage. Um, so thank you very much for that. Thank you.